out today on a drug to fight multiple sclerosis. Medical reporter Liz Bonus joins us now with how local researchers helped to make this discovery. Liz. Hey guys, good evening to you once again. A big announcement in the past few weeks from the National Institutes of Health about this study on MS. It turns out the team at the University of Cincinnati had one of the highest enrollments anywhere in the country for participation. The results have just been published now in the New England Journal of Medicine, and here's why. Just a few months ago, we first introduced you to Dr. Aram Zabedi. He's been part of the team conducting this new MS medication trial. It is funded by the National Institutes of Health. MS is a disease which impacts the central nervous system. Dr. Zabedi says inflammation may be to blame for some of its symptoms, but not in those who have what's called progressive MS which means that they don't have as much attack. They might have attack, but their main disability happened because of the neurodegeneration, not as much inflammation. The problem, Dr. Zabetti told me, is that when it comes to most medications, they are not working in the progressive phase of the disease. The NIH, however, has just announced that according to this new study, that could change. MS patients in this trial were given a medication called the Budalast. Not only did researchers discover this medication uh, safety profile was very favorable. But they also found when it comes to progressive MS, a Budalast appears to offer new hope, even though Dr. Zabetti says we're not exactly sure how the medication works. We think that it's lower the inflammation and has neuroprotective effect, which means that the nerve cells can live longer and live healthier. He points out a couple of very important things we need to know right now about this research. The next phase still needs to be completed, so we won't see it likely on the market for a little while. But what they found was pretty remarkable, not in body function, but what was happening in the brain. The study shows that the IBD loss can lower the risk of nerve damage and atrophy in the whole brain and in the cortex. That means, according to the NIH, it slows brain shrinkage, which they hope will eventually transfer into halting this type of a disease in a whole new way. We are hoping to slow down the rate of the progression. This is an incredible trial. It looked at 255 patients, not a lot, that's why they're doing more research, but they compared that drug to a placebo. The MRIs were compared between the two groups to show how the drug made such a significant difference. Cami? All right, Liz, thank you. And there were 28 sites for that trial across the country.